worried about letting someone else pick out the perfect avocado for your perfect impress them on the third date guacamole? Well, good thing Instacart shoppers are as picky as you are. They find ripe avocados like it's their guac on the line. They are milk expiration date detectives. They bag eggs like the 12 precious pieces of cargo they are. So let Instacart shoppers overthink your groceries so that you can overthink what you'll wear on that third date. Download the Instacart app to get free delivery on your first three orders while supplies last. Minimum $10 per order. Additional terms apply. Dive into the start of summer at Whole Foods Market. Check out their summer splash event with sales on fresh organic produce, organic strawberries, and a fan favorite sale on Ben and & Jerry's and Talenti. Explore deals on grill-friendly meats like organic air-chilled chicken breast, beef and chicken kebabs, all with no antibiotics ever from our meat department. Plus, grab easy sides from prepared foods and cool off with refreshing drinks. Kick off your summer and shop in store or online at Whole Foods Market today. Portions of the day's programming are reproduced by means of electrical transcriptions or tape recordings. This is the Bob and Jeff Show, starring Bob Lutz. These employees that are always wanting, uh, you know, a pat on the back, I don't have time for it. You think people are running by me telling me what a good job I'm doing on this show? Hi, hi, Jeff Lutz. Never. And there's a reason for it. You're not doing that good of a job. Oh, shocking. Monsters. 97.5 and 1240 KFH. Listen to this if you can. We are back. Hour number two, the Bob and Jeff show here on KFH Radio. Bob Lutz, Jeff Lutz, co-hosting Max Power, producing and engineering 869-1240, the IHOP hotline. We welcome your call. Uh, so where do you, where are the, uh, guardians this weekend? Angels in Anaheim. Eh, you ought to be able to go out there and do well. And then Colorado. Eh, you, ought, you, ought, you ought to be able to win a lot of games here. I mean, you hope, but you never want to count any chickens before they hatch. But, uh, yeah, it's favorable. Royals have Tampa in Tampa. Tampa's not and, very good. Uh, no, they're not. They're not having a very good year. And then they go to Minnesota for a four-game series. Uh, so then finally, I believe next weekend, we finally get the Royals and Guardians. Uh, I thought it was late June. It might be next weekend. But I thought it was the last. Why do I know more about your club than you do? No, it... it's uh, the first week of June. And then they also play the last week of June. Well, that's, that's what I said. Next Tuesday, so uh, the 4th. Yeah, June 4th. Not next weekend. June 4th, 5th, and 6th, you go to, you, you at, uh, you're at home against the Royals. Right, and then uh, last week. But of- before then, you have the Angels, Rockies, and Nationals. Then the Royals, and then you play Miami, Cincinnati. Good grief. Do you play a major league team at, at any time? They're all major league teams, and they're the teams on our schedule, and we'll take them on. And then we got Toronto. There's some. There's a chance to build up some wins here, and I uh, hope it happens. Well, let's look at these next uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine games against L.A., Colorado, Washington. Six and three is the very least you should be happy with. Well, whatever. I'd, I'd like six and three. I'd like just no, to win. I'd like you'd, to win today. You'd, you'd accept six and three. I'd like to win today. That's really all I, I am no, hoping for. No, that's not what you look for. Yeah. No, I'll look, not as a fan. I'm not going to look nine games ahead. As a fan, that's then, what you do. And then set myself up for disappointment. I want to win today. And if, if they win today, I want to win tomorrow. No, as a fan, if they you lose don't do today, that. I want to win tomorrow. I, I disagree. Well, I'm not an idiot, so, yeah, that is. I'm not a dumb fan. I'm not going to count nine wins. When we haven't even played one of the games yet. I've that's never just, called you an idiot on this show. Dumb. Have I? Many times. Uh, so I would never say that, but I disagree with you. You can disagree. I mean, I don't really care if you agree. But uh, I think a bad fan would be saying, hey, we're going to go 8-1 and one and look at our record. Now, I've got a deal with Shota Imanaga tonight, who has been, I mean, right now he's a Cy Young winner in the National League. Right up there. Uh, I don't think. Well, we'll see. I mean, I. Yeah, I'd probably vote for him. He's been 
pretty unhittable. I'm going to be over at the ballpark tonight, but how cool is it that Chip Carey and Joe Buck are doing the game tonight? That should be fun. I grew up on you-know-who, Harry Carey and Jack Buck. Did you grow up on that? I absolutely did. Or did you grow up mostly on on just Jack Buck? No, it was Harry Carey and Jack Buck, who I grew up on. Okay. And then Harry goes over to the White Sox. Yeah, but that was after I'd grown up. You'd grown up already when that happened? Because Harry was in Chicago for a long time, first with the White Sox and then with uh, the Cubs. He worked 25 years with St. Louis. Uh, until 19 through 1969. Eh, you were kind of so growing I was up, 14. I guess. But you don't you say you were a, a Cardinals fan since 63? So I guess you got six good years with him. No, I had seven. 63, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Seven seasons. Sure. Six, seven years. Six seven years. Seven seasons. Six with, years. With Harry a... Carey and Jack Buck. You still have those uh, records? Of yeah, World, they're somewhere. World Series on I vinyl? I them out. The no, you compilation didn't. of 64 and 67. Wore them out listening to him as a kid. It's good stuff. Uh, I w- could still tell you some of the stuff. The interview they had with Bob Euchre on that record is hilarious. Oh, he was Mr. Baseball. I was talking to Bill White, uh, of course, Gibson, and then all the play-by-play stuff. The way the 64 race, the way the Cardinals came back, late in the season, and the Phillies completely choked. And the Cardinals came back and won that uh, National League pennant. I mean, it was just incredible. It sounds amazing. What else you want to know? Nothing. Keep asking questions. I don't want to. I don't have any questions. But anyway, Chip Carey, the grandson of Harry, and... Joe Buck, the son of Jack, will be doing the game tonight on Bally Sports Midwest. It's beautiful. And I can't wait to get home tonight and listen to it. Joe Buck belongs calling baseball. I don't, I don't Football, he's fine, whatever. Go to ESPN, do your thing. But, man, he's a, he's a baseball guy to me. Well, he should be. He should be doing baseball, and eventually he will be back. He won't. I bet he will. He said no, he's done. No, nah, I bet he will. Okay, I don't think He'll so. He'll do more and more Cardinals games. I don't see it, but hey. Well, he loves he loves the city of St. Louis. Obviously, he grew up there. That's his home. Obviously. And he used to do Cardinals games. Uh but I predict he'll be he'll do more and more. That's not I what would, he said publicly, but I hey. would guess next season he'll do 15 Cardinals games. I doubt it, but you never know. They'll work him in to be Chip Carey's partner for 15 games. I next. doubt it, but That's hey. That's what this is. As long as you're it's optimistic. It's a trial run. No, it's not. It's a it nostalgia is. run. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. No, I know more about this than you no, do. No, you don't. Who would uh, Cleveland bring, bring back that could even sort of replicate this? Our guys are. Uh, Herb Score and. Uh, Herb Score is deceased. Who's his kid? Does his kid do any uh, broadcast? No, we've got Tom Hamilton on the radio Who's his broadcast. Kid? His kid played baseball somewhere. I don't know. Well, you don't have anybody. Our, I'm, I'm fine with our radio broadcast. Well, TV uh, could use a little bit, a little boost. Here's what Joe Buck said. I'm ready to move on from that part of my life. I've done baseball broadcasting since I was 19 professionally. I feel like I've done all I could do there. If someday I want to go back and call a few games, maybe. Mm-hmm. There you go. Here's the big fella really? waiting. Hello, big fella. Are you admitting you're wrong? No, that's exactly what I said. <laughs> no, you get you closed the door the, completely. Yeah, so did he. Did you hear a well, door close from Joe Buck, Anthony? Well, you know what? If y'all want to say the door closed from Joe Buck, y'all can use that. I guess I opened and closed my door on cue, so that sounds like a good segue right there. So everything was. He's also right said there. he's not going to call playoff <laughs> games on ESPN. <laughs> well, I, hey, I don't have a dog in that fight, but since you guys are, first of all, I want to say I rolled past uh, the campus of WSU right there on 21st Street, and that was a beautiful sight seeing part of Cessna Stadium that hasn't been torn down to see it filled up with people. I mean, it just brought back memories of the times I used to go there when I was a young kid and used to watch 
who I would call the wizard at quarterback, Prince McJunkins. But I don't want to get off target. You guys are talking about announcers and whatnot. So what I want to know is, regardless of the sport, and I want to make you, get you guys really riled up now because I know you guys are going to go full thrall on this one. Who are the guys that you listen to, your top five broadcasters of games, whether it be football, basketball, or baseball, and I mean, they were so good. Current at what or they all did. all time? All time. And I mean, they were so good at oh, what they did. One. They made they made you actually want to love the sport because of the way they call the game. And that's all I have. Well, right Jack Buck's number one for on me, that. and it's not all right. It's not particularly close. Um, so yeah, Jack Buck would be number one for me. I'd probably put Vin Scully into that mix. Uh, when you talk about football, I think Joe Buck, uh, given his uh, ability to do both uh, football and baseball at a very high level, I think you got to include him. Uh, I think uh, on the on just football, Pat Summerall uh, would be one of my five, and then I got to get a basketball person in there, and this one also does football. And he's contemporary, and he's never been the one guy at CBS. But Kevin Harlan is is the best, in my opinion. Those are my five. And let me ask this question, here, and let me get off here. Where why Howard don't I get Cosell to give my five? Why would Howard? He's where not a play-by-play. Play. I'm going play-by-play. Play. Oh, okay. All right. Well, that's all I have for you guys. And Jeff, I'm going to hear your five too. Come on, I'm listening on the air. Thanks, Anthony. All right. See ya. All right, go ahead, Jeff. Um, mine well, are all... Anthony got what he needed, but go ahead. Well, yours are boring. Oh, the best guy on the on te- on TV, the number one guy on every sport is who I like. Uh, Gary Cohen, I like for the Mets. <laughs> Marty Brenneman is is a good one. I love Dwayne Kuyper. Obviously, my guy Tom Hamilton, and then Vince Scully is going to be there. Not Jack Buck. Love Jack Buck, but I didn't get to hear enough of him. And no football, P. Just all a bunch of regional cable guys. Yeah, it's it's uh yeah regional cable. I don't care about football? I mean, I care. I, I care and, about and no football. Kevin Harlan. No, they're down the street. I mean, give me a that break. That doesn't even that 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 was a terrible. I don't need your gimmicks. I don't need your national TV gimmicks. I want I want somebody to call no, the we game. We want Tom Hamilton. That's a double for Ramirez. Yeah, Ramirez. Let, you don't you know nothing about Tom That's a Hamilton. Double for Ramirez. Have you ever listened to a second of Tom Hamilton? Because that I mean that makes you sound like one of the dumbest people on the planet. <laughs> to, what you to know portray what? Portray him as that reaction is the best. thing. Do you thing. like sounding dumb? I mean, is that something that, that you enjoy? From you is the best thing I've ever encountered. You didn't answer my question. Here's Tom Hamilton. Max, I almost wish you'd get a cut of Tom Hamilton. Here's Cleveland potentially winning the uh, winning a game on a on a game winning hit. There's a ball into the corner. Uh, Naylor's rounding. Yeah, third. you're an idiot. <laughs> I'm not. I, you're not being an idiot. You I are. An you idiot. are an idiot. Yeah. Because how I'm, dare you call your father an well, idiot? I, what's the point of that? What's the point of that? Well, that's an awful thing to call me an idiot. Well, I, I, I wish you. Show. I wish you knew better. Uh, I just don't like it when you try to be a, well, I'll just dig into the weeds here and come up with five guys who 11 people have heard. Well, those are the guys I like. Uh, that, that's not, I've never sought out a football game because of the announcement. Anthony, that's why I got off. That, that's why once I gave my five, he said, thank you, Bob. I'll, I'll, that's all I need. Uh, if Jeff wants to give his, uh, Garrett Cohen, uh, three guys from uh, El Segundo. You don't like and Dwayne a guy Kiper. who died last year. I have Tom. Nobody Hamilton. needs that. Here we go. <laughs> uh, Say that again, El- Max. A guy from El Segundo. Field. It is- yeah. There's Tommy Hamilton for you. Oh, One exciting. of the best. And then he uh, and then he lays out so you can hear the crowd, and then he jumps back in. Exciting! In the uh, it is, he is exciting. Yeah. Every, everyone in Cleveland loves. He's him. worked in Cleveland for seventy years. Right. What are you trying Geyer to say? We're not going to break just Six because you're popping up. What did Max Indians. say? Game seven of what has been a classic World okay. Series between two teams had to go that have longed for that championship. 
more years than any other Are we going to get anything, Max? Baseball. And I'm, I'm going to sleep. For the Indians. The pitch. Swung in, lined to deep left field. It is gone! Yeah, that's, that's boring. One of the most historic home runs I could have called that. All right, we'll take a break. When we come back, Bryce Burkdahl from Andover Central. Pole vaulter. Pole vaulter. Cleared 17-2 today to set a state record. He will join us next. Call from mom. Answer it. Call silenced. Instacart knows nothing gets between you and the game. That's why they make ordering from your couch easy. Stock up today and get all your groceries for the week delivered in as fast as 30 minutes without missing a minute of the game. You have 47 new voicemails. Download the app to get free delivery on your first three orders while supplies last. Minimum $10 per order. Additional terms apply. Dive into the start of summer at Whole Foods Market. Check out their summer splash event with sales on fresh organic produce, organic strawberries, and a fan favorite sale on Ben and & Jerry's and Talenti. Explore deals on grill-friendly meats like organic air-chilled chicken breast, beef and chicken kebabs, all with no antibiotics ever from our meat department. Plus, grab easy sides from prepared foods and cool off with refreshing drinks. Kick off your summer and shop in store or online at Whole Foods Market today. Save on Cox Internet when you add Cox Mobile and get fiber-powered internet at home and unbeatable 5G reliability on the go. So whether you're playing a game at home, yes, cool, or attending one live, no! you can do more without spending more. Learn how to save at cox.com slash internet. Cox Internet is connected to the premises via coaxial cable. Cox Mobile runs on the network with unbeatable 5G reliability as measured by Ookla LLC in the U.S. to H 2023. Results may vary, not an endorsement. Other restrictions apply. This is the Bob and Jeff Show on 97.5 and 1240 KFH. Uh, we are joined by Bryce Burkdahl from Andover mm-hmm. Central, one of the state's mm-hmm. all-time best high school pole vaulters, one of the country's all-time best high school pole vaulters. Bryce, you won today in your event, 17 feet, 2 inches. Congratulations. A great way to uh, end your high school career. Thanks, Jeff. It was a lot of fun today. So I'm just curious, when you got up this morning knowing this was your last hurrah as a, as a high school participant at Andover Central, what's that feel like? Well, to be honest, I didn't give it much thought. I was just wanting to jump high today and maybe put on a good show at uh, 9.30 this morning. <laughs> there you go. So now that it is over, and, and when I talked to you, uh, after the event, you said something about next time or next year, and then you caught yourself. So has that sunk in that uh, your your high school career is over? Uh, not quite, but I'm sure it'll hit me one of these days. I still feel like a high schooler, but <laughs> those days are gone now. It's going to catch up to me. Uh, Bryce Burkdahl from Andover Central, an extremely highly accomplished pole vaulter, so your event comes to an end, but your team's still out there participating. Uh, do you still hang around uh, Cessna Stadium? Will you be there tomorrow? Are you rooting people on? Oh, yeah. I'll be out there supporting my team tomorrow. That's for sure. So how did you get into pole vault? I know your older brother uh, is a esteemed and accomplished pole vaulter as well. Uh, how did you guys go down that track? Well, it's in the family. My dad was a pole vaulter at Wichita State. He was an All-American, so it's definitely um, big shoes to fill. But I got into it at a Shocker Track Club my freshman year, not wanting to do the running workouts, and it just it was a lot of fun, so I kept doing it. And my dad picked up coaching at Andover Central to kind of lead me to where I am today. So, yeah, it's been a great journey so far. So you you had gone seventeen nine, and I'm just curious, you know, uh, that happened pretty recently. I think it was at the league meet, right? 
Yes, sir. So yeah, that gets you to the the top uh, the top pole vault in the nation for this season. Uh, how was that to carry around as as the best in the nation? Uh, and and what did that mean to you to to get that height? Well, I'm just glad I should I could um, secure that mark this season. It's been a lot of fun jumping against those other top guys in the nation, especially at Texas relays and KU relays. It's just really fun to have good competition and I'm glad that um, I could come out on top this year. We're talking uh, with Bryce Berkdahl from Andover Central. He won the pole vault event today at the, at the uh, state high school track and field meet at Cessna Stadium. So you mentioned your dad, Ryan, whose personal best was 18 feet 6 inches. He's a member of the Shocker Sports Hall of Fame. Uh, you have a brother, Ashton, who's competing at KU. What's his PR? His PR is 18 feet. Okay. So how important are you, how, how much are you guys trying to get that, uh, that record your dad has? Well, it's, we're getting there. That's for sure. I've got a little more to go than he <laughs> does, but we both, put up attempts at high bars so far we're looking to get up there soon maybe next year when we're voting together up at KU because I have a son I do this radio show with and he's been trying to attain my high bar for a while and uh he almost gets there yeah almost <laughs> <laughs> so so Bryce you talked earlier uh about you know you kind of threw yourself into the pole vault community this year you didn't really know a whole lot of people uh, coming into this year. So how did that all go? What what kind of uh, urge do you want to do that? Just wanted to get to know people better around Kansas. I'm going to vault with them for the next four years and at the collegiate level. And I just wanted to get to know people more than last year, I guess. I didn't really know anyone going into state last year. So it's better to vault with friends than strangers, for sure. So you had the event won today. You you had a, a a personal best, and well, not a personal best, but a state best, and you put the bar to seventeen ten to try to uh, eclipse your personal best jump. Uh, when you were trying to clear seventeen ten, and you're you're going down the runway, how confident were you that you could get over seventeen ten? And was there a when you're a pole vaulter? I'm just curious about this. Is there a spot either on the runway or during the jump when you think to yourself, I did not nail this? Probably uh, at your takeoff. If you take off at the wrong spot, it's, it, can, it can ruin your whole jump. The run and takeoff are the most important parts of the vault. And um, the wind was dying on me a little at the end of the runway. So once I took off too far out and just couldn't make it happen, it gets really specific where you need to take off on these bigger poles and uh, higher bars. So it takes a lot of consistency to. So, be so level. basically, you know whether you're going to clear the bar uh, much earlier than you your actual arrival at the bar, right? Well, I have a good idea if I'll be able to clear the bar after takeoff. That's for sure. But you never know until I, you're over, I guess. What's what's your summer look like? What how what's the preparation you want to attain by the time you uh, start this in college? How what do you what does your your work look like over over the summer? Well, I'm just gonna keep training towards uh, under twenty nationals and Nike nationals up in Eugene, Oregon, Hayward Field, and then we're just gonna see where the rest of my summer goes. going to keep training up until I go to KU. Well, it's been a, it's been an incredible run uh, for you, for your family. Uh, just uh, one of the real, really cool stories, this uh, pole vaulting family, uh, the Birkdahl clan. Best of luck and congratulations. Don't take any of this for granted. It's a, an amazing accomplishment, and we appreciate you coming on the show, Bryce. Thanks for having me, Jeff. All right, Thanks. Bryce Burkdahl from Andover Central. That's a first. Yeah. Like he may have thought I was Jeff during that entire interview.
Maybe. I don't know. I don't. I don't like that. Obviously, I sound. I thought I sounded a little more sophisticated than that, but who knows? Well, I don't like that one bit. That was a strange feeling. Well, that happens to me a lot. I know, but I I get a kick out of that. Why? Well, I don't know. It's just I don't. I don't know why I get a kick out of. Well, I don't know either. To but be to, quite but honest, to call with me you. Jeff. I, I'm I'm not a fan of that. That did, that did not sit well with me. You'll be all right though, won't you? Well, I don't know if I'll be all right. You did arrange the interview. I'll give you twice. that. Huh? He said it twice. He did? To yeah. me? Yeah. I missed the first time. It was uh, when you introduced him. He said, thanks, Jeff, or something like that. Good grief. Did you not tell him I would be participating in the interview? No, I said, do you want to come? I texted his mom because I didn't know his What did you say? Do you want to come on my radio show? Oh, here's By what the I... way, I never do that. Here's what I said. Hi, I'm not sure which member of the Barkdale family I got here, but this is Jeff Lutz with KFH Radio and Channel 12. I was wondering if we can get Bryce on our afternoon on show. On our or, or mine? Our afternoon show today at 325. I did not say Bob and Jeff. Usually I name it, so I, I, I neglected oh, he doesn't to do even that. know who I am. Nor should he. You weren't out there in the sweltering I was just some guy summer that, heat today. I was just some guy asking a dumb question oh, in his mind. A few. Well, thank goodness he thinks it was you. No, if I he think. he thought the questions were dumb. No, I think initially. Or eventually, he's like, "There's one guy asking really good questions, and another guy I don't appear knows who I am." Uh, and so you know, it happens. Let's get back to that Tom Hamilton call, shouldn't we? I enjoyed that. So did I. He's got a lot biggest of biggest moment he's ever had, and he said three words. You let it play out. It's no, not, not in that moment, moment. It's not about him. Not in he that understands moment. when you lay out. You better and make a call. No, you, you don't make a call. You describe what happened, and then you let the atmosphere be what it is. Did you? Uh, do you? Do you happen to remember Joe Buck's call of the David Freeze home run? Yes, we'll see you tomorrow night. That was it. Yeah, one of the great calls in the history. Oh, of a, a copied call, sure, but it was a nice. Well, but, a copied but it's not call like from he, who? But it's not like he talked through the whole trot from around his the bases. Who said it? Uh, when Kirby Puckett hit his home run in the 91 World Series. Sure. In the uh, Metrodome against the Braves. Yeah, I remember. To win that epic battle. Okay. What What's your problem? I don't have a problem. But you're just describing exactly what you uh, said you, know you hated. I want you to be honest. When you get tired of doing this show, you tell me. All right. I got nine candidates I'd like to interview. Is there any way we can go back to June of 2018? What does that mean? You said to tell you when I get tired of doing the show. Oh, so you got <laughs> tired in June of 2018. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying I'd like to go back and see how I was feeling then. I have several candidates I could talk like, to. Name a couple. I'll name them. I'm listening. When I'm ready, I'll name them. I'm ready. They're out there. Trust me. I believe you. Anthony, the big fella? Tom Holding on the IHOP hotline. Hey, Tom. How you guys doing? We're doing hey, well, Tom. Road, it's been Tom. a while. Good, good, good. Uh, high school track. If you like high school track, there is nothing better than the state high school track. And you don't even have to know the participants. The competition is incredible. And it wouldn't be a state meet without Don there up there talking. He knows more about track than anybody probably in the world. And Chicago, uh, yeah, digress a little bit. Chicago the other night, towards the end, were really, really, really good. They weren't as good as when we heard them in Arrowhead with the Beach Boys, 17 of them out together. That was that's incredible. But it was good. What? How many of their originals? I know Robert Lamb's still there, James Pankow. Uh, I believe they have another of their horn players, don't they? The trumpet player and the trombone player that's and the keyboard player. Okay. Uh, Lou Loft. Uh, yeah. Lee Loft fame. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thanks, Tom. You're welcome. You guys have a good day. Appreciate it. You too. Yeah, I, I, you know, I wish I could have seen Chicago, but it wasn't in the cards. Not this time. Not for me. Not this time. Um, well, I had something on my mind. Did you see the uh, interference call that ended the White Sox Orioles game? I did. Major League Baseball apologizing. For that call. How about we just don't, how about we just get the call right? 
That was that wasn't interference. It it he was, was going back to the bag. He did interfere, he but didn't it was do it purposely. It was a stupid call. Yeah, that's you have that to you have, have to have a, you have to have feel. That should have been called an out as an umpire. It's they not want just, to make it all about themselves. Not just by the book. You have to have feel also, and that was no feel, as Brent Kimnitz would like to say. Uh, I don't like it when you take on this air of expertise. Why? Don't I, don't I know, know a lot of just, stuff? It, I don't know. I, I don't. did run into a scoring thing uh, that well, I did not. Let me see if I can get it for you. Well, it's not. It's not a play. It's a. Uh, I did not know that uh, pitchers could not get a blown save and a hold. You cannot get a blown save. If you have a hold, the blown save, you would leave with the lead, and the blown save would go to the next pitcher who comes in, even if he allows a run charge to you. Because that happened the other night. A, a, a wind surge pitcher... It was his run that came in to tie the game, but he wasn't in the game because he left the, with the well, lead. How is that a hold? All you have to do in a, to I'd get give a, up the hold, and and that's a blown save. No, you. It was a hold by definition, because he left with the lead. It doesn't matter if his runs uh, come around to score. Uh, I'm going to look that one up. Who cool. told you that one? We looked it up. We don't. We're not just out there winging it. You sure? Yeah, we want to get it right because who's we? The people in the in the booth. Whoever I'm working with. You uh, got a game tonight? Yes, but I'm not scoring tonight. What are you doing? The uh, stringing the game day app. And then what? Tomorrow you got state track. You got wind surge tomorrow. Yes. What are you doing all this for? And Sunday and five days next week. What are you doing all this for? That's just how it lined up. But, yeah, I think Clay Shively runs it, uh, too, so I'll probably stay through that and uh, call it good. Yeah, good for you. It'll be a fun I, fun little day. I hope the weather cooperates. Pretty good weather day today, except a little windy. But uh, we nice. can't complain too much. Well, we like the breeze. I'm going to leave a little early today for League 42 and drive over by Cessna Stadium. Get a feel for it. It's about the same. I'm sure those uh, boys will gather tonight, those veteran guys, Maycock, Pask. They'll probably do that uh, tomorrow uh, Dwayne after, Frazier. after it's all over. Now they do it on Friday night. No, they didn't. No, they don't. And yeah, they, they do. No, they don't. I've, I've been a part of yeah, it. I've been a part they of it. They do it after it's I all go over. On Friday. Saturday. No, they well, never do it. you go alone on Friday. They never do it on Saturday. Yes, they do. And Dwayne's listening, and he'll text us both. No, he won't. He won't. He, listen, I've, I was a part of that for a while. It's Saturday after everything's over is when you go. It's probably been on Sunday a time or two. No. When would it be baseball on Sunday? Used to, baseball used to go into Sunday occasionally. No, these guys, after the state track meet, they always cover the state track meet. Then they go out and have a, a bite to eat. Yeah. And reminisce and talk about it. Were you invited? No. I went one year, I think. Well, why wasn't I invited? I never used to cover state track. That's why I think I... This is only my third time covering state track. One with the Eagle and then two with Channel 12. I covered it a few times, probably seven, eight, nine, ten, something like that. Yeah, I was, I was uh, way back in the day. Overwhelmed at first, the first time, but it's it can be overwhelming. It's a pretty easy event to cover once you figure it out. Well, you got to figure it out. It's not hard to figure you gotta out. Hit the highlights. Yeah, you got to just go where things are happening. That's where Don Stefan comes in. Don Stephens. He he tells us what's he, going on. He tells you the highlights. And before every track meet I ever covered, I talked to Don about what are the, what what should I be looking for here? What's what are the things that uh, that I need to pay attention to? Yeah, I talked to TJ about that. He gave me some things to look out for. TJ Cleland, who, yeah, a young guy from Channel Twelve. I love the kid, but he's not Don Steffens. He is not, but he, he gave me some storylines. No question. Did a heck of a job too. Oh, there you go. He was, at, he was back at the studio on the OTT desk breaking things down for us. Now you can uh, read your coverage at kwch.com. If you so choose. If you're so inclined. Why, why would you say it like that? Why would yeah. you say, hey, read my coverage? I mean, if you want to. Why would you say it? Why wouldn't you be more forceful? Do whatever you want. I wrote some. Why would you say it like that? Yeah, if you want to, Sell read it. yourself. If you don't, don't read it. Sell yourself. Nah. 
Well, that implies to me that you're not that in, in You want to read it? Great. If you don't, great. Is it good stuff? It's all right. See, you don't even sell yourself. I don't need to sell myself. On this show, I sell myself. If you want to go read about state Here's what I'd crap. tell you. If you want to hear this radio show, tune in. Well, okay. Because it's good stuff. And you and think I'm, that's some kind of revolution? I'm on the top of my game. Absolutely. We've all thought that for a long time. No, really. That's what that's what you do. Okay. You try to sell yourself. You convince people. If I got in here and said, oh, I hope you listen today. We, we're going to try to have some segments. And if we talk about something that interests you, that's how Tom Hamilton would do this show. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to do this show like... Like uh, Kevin Harlan. Okay. Quit looking at your phone when I'm talking I'm to you. I'm just checking out what's uh, what's been going on. I'm trying to conduct a radio show. Well, then conduct it. Well, I need you to be engaged. I am engaged. It's just about over, though, right? What are you listening to? What are you looking at on your phone? I was looking at Catch at Kansas to see what this state tracker is. But it doesn't look like, uh, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I don't know why that's the lead story on catch at kansas the state qualifiers we've got the meat underway folks let's let's do something vipers in action tonight at league 42 six o'clock you coming over gotta work <laughs> still haven't made it to a game i'll get there probably uh thanks for listening everyone have a great memorial day weekend we will be back here on tuesday see you soon Dive into the start of summer at Whole Foods Market. Check out their summer splash event with sales on fresh organic produce, organic strawberries, and a fan favorite sale on Ben and & Jerry's and Talenti. Explore deals on grill-friendly meats like organic air-chilled chicken breast, beef and chicken kebabs, all with no antibiotics ever from our meat department. Plus, grab easy sides from prepared foods and cool off with refreshing drinks. Kick off your summer and shop in store or online at Whole Foods Market today. Save on Cox Internet when you add Cox Mobile and get fiber-powered internet at home and unbeatable 5G reliability on the go. So whether you're playing a game at home yes, cool. or attending one live, no! you can do more without spending more. Learn how to save at cox.com slash internet. Cox Internet is connected to the premises via coaxial cable. Cox Mobile runs on the network with unbeatable 5G reliability as measured by Ookla LLC in the U.S. to H 2023. Results may vary, not an endorsement. Other restrictions apply. Welcome to Nada Yada Island. This season on Nada Yada Island. When we were new, they spoiled me. They even gave me a phone. But then, it's like I didn't exist. Don't take Yada Yada from your wireless carrier. Now with Metro, get that new customer feeling again and again. Introducing Metro Flex. Free 5G phones when you join, same deals as new customers when you stay. Only at Metro by T-Mobile. Just bring your number and ID and sign up for an eligible plan. After 12 months, trade in and get our best deals on select devices.